And uh, Bubba, we are getting excited uh, to talk to our old friend Max Licato. Uh, you know, he has uh, authored and sold 92 million copies of books in 54 languages worldwide. Uh, he's been on the New York Times bestseller list so many times, and and he's even gotten into you know the world like us trying to figure out all this. Uh, um, you know, social media and all that. I was looking, he's got 2.4 million followers on Facebook, 1.3 on Twitter, uh, Instagram, 293,000. You know, those are things you add now. Yeah, that, ain't, that, too, that ain't too shabby. Welcome back, Max Licato. Max. Rick and Bubba, how are you, Max? Hey, it's, it's sure great to talk to you guys. I, I remember when you and I first started talking, social media wasn't even a conversation point. What? I know. Isn't that, well, isn't that Max, odd? I don't think the internet was out there when we first started talking. <laughs> I'm not sure fire had been discovered. <laughs> well, Max, thank you for being with us, and uh, we're, we're excited to talk about Kent. Could, would you mind right out of the gate, because you have uh, so many people that uh, God has honored you uh, uh, with, with so many great uh, people who, who benefit from what he has done through you, and uh, so people love you. And, um, and so I know that you, um, uh, have, um, uh, a health issue that you have told everyone about, but some people may have missed that. Could, could you update us, uh, on, uh, on your health right now? Thank you. Thank you. Yes. And I appreciate, uh, everyone's prayers. Um, about, um, two months ago, I got diagnosed with, uh, what's called an ascending aortic aneurysm. Uh, I don't like any of those words, but, uh, there's, a my my aorta has a, a large balloon in it. Uh, it's bulging, and uh, it's pretty big. It's pretty big, and it, odds are really good that it'll take uh, some serious surgery. Uh, we're still doing tests right now. Uh, I'm still doing my ministry. I preached yesterday at the church. I'm traveling today. It's not anything that, that really slows me down. It does somewhat, but not terribly. And so uh, I'm I'm feeling at peace about it. I'm in great uh, uh, care with some terrific doctors where I live in in South Texas. And so thank you for asking. Thanks for your prayers. And uh, uh, you know, not, nobody lives a day longer than than our good Lord d- has destined for us. And so I'm asking that I get a lot more days, but I trust Him completely. So yes, thank you for that update, and we are we are all praying with you, and we do understand, you know, the the who's in charge, and yeah, uh, yeah. and and the key is make the most of the time he gave you, and you've certainly done that. Max, let me ask you real quick before we move off of this: do you, what kind of symptoms do you have with that? How is that's, that affecting you day to day? That's what's curious. There, it is asymptomatic, uh, and what I understand, and I'm sure there's some doctors listening this morning who are laughing at my first grade understanding. <laughs> But uh, from what I understand, uh, unless it is detected incidentally, uh, a person would never know that they have this. And I, I was actually uh, undergoing a, a test to see about the calcium level in my heart, and, uh, uh, and, and then the report came back that, well, your calcium's okay, but we've got a real issue here with the size of your ascending aorta. Mm. Yeah, Bub and I get that uh, test to the calcium test so that's where they caught it yeah. okay yeah. yes sir um all yes, right sir. let's talk about the. you know how sometimes uh we, we say this a lot sometimes god's subtle sometimes not so subtle at all uh apparently he wants me to go back and really really look at the story of esther uh because uh my my pastor uh mac brunson at the, the local church where i attend uh is doing a series on esther and then i get to looking at your new book you were made for this moment and it, and of course, it's based off the story of Esther. So I'm like, well, well Lord, I, I guess I thought I had the Esther thing. I guess I don't. Uh, and I, but I will say this: uh, I am learning more. You know, the Bible's amazing because it is living, and we do believe it's the inspired Word of God. And and no matter how many times you think you know something, you go back and you realize, I guess, as you're growing in your faith, su- suddenly something new is revealed to you that you've never really noticed before. And that's really happening with me uh, with this statement. You know, the, the book of Esther never mentions God. We don't know mm. who wrote it. And as our pastor said, well, I think it's pretty simple. This is a story that God wanted to tell us, and yeah. he wanted us to know about it. So so we're in times right now. The new book is called You Were Made for This Moment, Courage for Today and Hope for Tomorrow. Uh, Max, I don't have to tell you this. we got a lot of terrified people. We've, mm-hmm. got, we've got a lot of people that are unsure. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, we're living in, in a time where – uh, everything just seems so uncertain. I know that's mm-hmm. been going on since the fall of mankind 
in different ways. But but you can just tell there there's a out there talking to people. They're 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 afraid, and if they're people of faith, they know they've been told they're not supposed to be afraid. Uh, they're anxious, but, but the Bible tells them they shouldn't be anxious, and they're struggling with that. Uh, they know what they believe. Now, some people out there don't share our belief system, so I don't know what they're clinging to now. But but we do hope they find the same hope that God offers to all who are willing. But but um, tell tell us what you're hoping people take away from this book in in these times. Boy, you hit the nail on the head, and. In describing the felt need that's out there, we're wearied, we're wounded, um, and we're worried. Uh, we're weary from the pandemic. We're wounded by the the conflict that we have uh, in our country, and we're worried. We're worried that that our kids are not going to turn out okay. We're worried about our marriages. It's a it is a tough time. Uh, we are seeing right now. Uh, anxiety at the highest level uh, in decades, and the most tragic uh, suicides are at the highest rate since World War II. Uh, so we're just we've we've lost our balance as a people. Uh, we're really struggling. You, you recall, I'm a I'm, I'm a pastor. I, I I still preach at our church, and um, when the pandemic was in full force, it was my turn to preach. And I asked uh, the Lord, I said, Lord, what, what is a good, what's the right message during a pandemic? And, and uh, uh, this idea of Esther came to my mind because it was a global crisis. Uh, the story of, of the Jews uh, in ancient Persia uh, under the rule of a despot, of a, of, a, of a leader, Haman, who wanted to destroy them. Xerxes, the king who was uh, clueless and checked out, and then there's Mordecai and Esther, two Jews who had kept their uh, Jewish ancestry a secret and yet had the opportunity to act in a way that could save their people. And then, like you say, this unique story, because God's name is not mentioned, his fingerprints are on every page. Sure. But if somebody's passing through a tough time, they know what it's like to not hear the voice of God. So it had all the elements, and uh, I preached the sermons that the church well received, and so we turned it into a book, and and I think uh, I'm praying that it will help people as they're struggling in these difficult days. You know, one of the things that that I, and uh, you need to get into the book, we won't be able to cover it all, that I took away, you know, hearing it again, like I said, from my own pastor, is when you look at the way that Mordecai and Esther were living, they really didn't do what Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did. They did compromise. Uh, they mm-hmm. were they were hiding their their Jewishness. Mm-hmm. They were eating the foods they weren't supposed to eat. My goodness, she even enters into marriage to a Gentile. Uh, that's right. Yeah, yes. but yet God still that's that grace and mercy again. J- God still used them. So you see mm-hmm. that He uses people that that you seem to go well. They make the right decisions every time, but He mm-hmm. still. It uses people who seem to be compromising and making their own decisions. No, absolutely. But boy, you're hitting the nail on the head on that story because uh, a lot of times we forget that initially Mordecai and Esther, uh, they kept their faith a secret. Uh, no one could, t- I mean, they were so Persian in identity and language and dress and culture that uh, one could work for the king, the other could sleep with the king, and nobody knew that they were Jewish. Mm-hmm. I mean, they, yeah. they had compromised their faith. But then they had the equivalent of a come-to-Jesus moment yep. uh, when, when Mordecai refused to bow before Haman, the uh, anti-Semitic Jew hater. He refused to bow, and then all the game was over, and he, everybody then knew that he was Jewish. And then he sent that famous message to Esther. Uh, who knows, but that you have come to your place for such a time as this. And then she had to make an opportunity, and she spent three days in prayer and fasting, seeking the Lord's will. I know the most dramatic moment in the movies about Esther are when she's beautiful and standing before King Xerxes, hoping he'll allow her to come into his presence. I think the most dramatic are those three days of prayer in which she's seeking the Lord, asking forgiveness for hiding her faith, and courage for moving forward. Yeah, and and one of the things I take away, no matter how my, many times we may become part of the culture and try to hide our faith, sooner or later God says, "I'm going to force you in a situation. You're going to declare me. You're you going you're going to stand up, and tell everybody who we are." There's a lot's yeah. about to get flipped on, <laughs> right? Yep. And, there it is. Uh, 
and we and we have the answers, you know. And 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 at a time like this, I think um, the takeaway, and and I encourage people to get out and, and and get the book, is to realize that we are in difficult times. But those of us that are part of the universal church, we we're in this difficult time in order to point people to the hope that's mm-hmm. only found in Christ. That that Amen. that that's why we're here. If you, if you wonder why we're here, that's why. And uh, I think yeah. I think one of the reasons that the story of Esther, it's only nine chapters, by the way. You can read it during your lunch break. I think the reason it's in the Bible is to tell us that God places people in certain geographical locations, in certain generations, uh, and gives them a task. And I believe every one of your listeners, and I believe you, the, the, those of us who are on this call, God has assigned us this pandemic. He has assigned us this crisis. Yep. He's waiting and looking for people to, to take a stand, to not cower, to not give in, to not become bitter, to not retreat. But he's looking for people who will move forward in faith and joy and hope and trust in the power of our living God and, uh, and, set, and be a light, be a hope of encouragement. This isn't the time for us to be mad at the world. This is the time for us to bring joy and hope to the world. And we were made for this moment, just like Esther was made for hers. Thank you, Max. Outstanding. Thank you. The book is You Were Made for This Moment, Courage Today uh, and Hope for Tomorrow. It's available wherever books are sold.